What's going on everyone? We've been working with looping while loops and uh, in this video we're going to look at a different type of loop which is the for loop. And so we're going to compare, you know, we're going to try to understand what the for loop does and then we're going to compare it to the while loop and try to understand the difference between the two. So let's get started with that. Uh, what you have to understand first is that the for loop um, is, is useful when you know, or actually you cannot use the for loop unless you know how many times you need to loop ahead of time. So if I, if I know like uh, I need to loop 10 times, then I can use a for loop. But uh, if you don't know how many times, like, uh, you know, you don't know how many times somebody's going to enter the wrong name or something, then you need a while loop. So that, that's kind of the difference on the surface. So I'm just going to write some notes here. This is a for loop. The uh, syntax is a little bit different. So the for loop starts with the keyword for, as you might imagine. And then uh, then the next thing, though, is that then you, you would list a variable name. Okay, and I'll, I'll describe this uh, in an example in a second. Then the next thing we do is the, we use the keyword in. Okay, and uh, then we need what's called the range function. And all of this, this is a lot to mem remember, I think, maybe. But really, 2, 3, and 4 all go together. It's just, it's kind of like one, you know, big construct that I'm, I'm decomposing into three things. And again, you'll see that in an example in a second. Then we need a colon. And then, uh, just like with the while loop, the next line is indented, okay, and possibly other lines. All the lines that we want inside our for loop need to be indented. All right, so I'm just going to give you an example. That's the best way to go about learning the for loop. So I'm going to write for. There's the, there's number one, the keyword for. For, and I'm going to choose a variable name. A common name for the for the for loop is just i, like like some counter, like i or j. So I'm going to say for i. There's my variable name in. That's that's uh, the next thing that we need. Number three. Then range. I'm going to elaborate on range at the end of this video, so I'm just going to give it five. So that's the range function. I'm giving it the uh, the the uh, the number five in this case. You can give it whatever number you want. Um, I'm going to give it five, and then I'm going to put a colon, and then the next line I'm going to indent. My uh, spider indents automatically. If yours doesn't, then you just need to hit the uh, tab button there to to tab over. All right. So I'm going to say I'm going to just in this simple example. I'm going to write, I can count to, and then I'm going to concatenate that with the variable i. Now, i is going to be a uh, numerical uh, data, piece of data, and uh, so I'm going to convert that to a string so I can concatenate it. And that's it for my simple program. So I'm just going to save that, control S, and I'm going to run it, and let's observe what we get out. First of all, you'll see i is equal to 4. And then you'll see the output from the print statement. I can count to zero, I can count to one, all the way to I can count to four. Hmm. So we see that, yes, line 16 has been looped, right? It executed five, a total of five times. And it's not a coincidence that we gave the range function the number five. What the range function is doing is it's, it's, it's setting up I to be zero, then one, then two, then three, then four for a total of five times because we started at zero. Notice that i does not equal five, so five is not included, right? i was four and then the loop finished. So that number that we give it is not included, but it does loop a total of that number, right? Because we start at zero. So that's exactly what it's doing here. No big deal. Uh, i starts at zero by default. I can count to zero. Then it comes back up to the loop, increments i by one. I can, I can count to one. Then goes back up, sets i to 2, i can count to 2. All the way up to 4, i can count to 4, and then the, the, um, the, the for loop finishes at, with i equal to 4. Right? And so that's it. That's, uh, that's how uh, you know, the range works, and that's how uh, the for statement or the for loop works. Now, uh, we, we're going to have a, a few more things to say about range, but I also want to point out now that uh, the continue and the break keywords will also work for the for loop, just in the same way they worked for the while loop. So you'll want to experiment a little bit uh, with that. 
Now, I'm gonna, before we get into what range is doing, I'm going to give you another example. So I'm just going to comment this out with uh, Control-1 on my keyboard. And I'm, in my next example, I'm going to initialize a variable to 0. Initialize, initialize total to 0, right? And then I'm going to say for num or something, you know, or for i, we'll say for i in, um, in in range 10, uh, or uh, let's say 5, 5 is probably, or no, we'll, we'll do 10, colon, indent, and then I'm going to say total equals total plus i, and then at the end, like once it's done looping, I'm going to see what the value of total is. All right. Um, also, uh, if you recall, and I hope you do, because this is this is um, you know something cool or you know something that you know pro a, a, a programmer you know a professional programmer would not write this. A professional programmer would instead write total plus equals i. This is like incrementing the total variable. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use that. I feel like it's my duty to to tell you this, but I'm gonna keep the old one the old way commented there so you can you can use that one because it's more descriptive of what what is actually happening anyway so what this is going to do uh, when we run it it's going to set total equal to zero and then it's going to set i equal to zero by default then total will become the old total zero plus zero so total is going to stay zero then it's going to loop up set i equal to one by default, right, it increments by 1. Total equals the old total, which was 0, plus i, which is 1. So now total will become 1. Then it's going to come back up, and it's going to set i equal to 2. Then total will become the old total, which was 1, plus 2. So now total will become 3. And then it's going to come back up, and i is going to be equal to 3. Total will become the old total, 3, plus 3, 6. And I'll keep doing that until i is 9. And, and when i is 9, it'll take the current value of total and add 9 to it, and then make that the new total. And then it'll print total. And remember, i will not be 10. This number is not included in i. All right, so let's take a look at that. I'm going to just reset everything, reset our variables. You don't have to, but I just like to start fresh. And uh, I'm going to save it, Control s and run it. Oops. Save and run. All right, so we get a value of 45, and you'll see i is 9, right? And total is 45. All right, now uh, we can get a better handle. You know, if you didn't like my description of what is actually going on, we can get a better better handle of what's inside the for loops, uh, the for loop in this case, by pr printing the values of the variables in inside the for loop. This is a good debugging trick. Like if, you're, if your loop is just not working like you want it to work, you might want to take a look at the values of the variables as they update in the loop. So for example, I'm going to say print inside the loop, the value of i is, and then I'm going to say string i. And then um, after total is updated, I'm going to print, still inside the loop though, I'm going to print the value of total is, and, and uh, total is already, let's see, total is a number, so yeah, i got to convert that to a string to, to concatenate. All right, so now with those print statements inside the loop, we're going to see the values of i and total. Um, as this thing loops, and then and at the end, I'm going to say the final value, just so that uh, you know we're, it's unambiguous. The final value of total is like that. All right, perfect. Again, I'm going to reset everything just because uh, I like starting fresh, and I'm going to save Control S and run it. Here we go. Oh. I got a, oh, yep, got to put string here, print the string, whoops, all right, let's, let's run it again. All right, so here we see, 
the first uh, the first iteration of the loop i is equal to zero and the, at the end of the loop the value of total is zero then the second iteration of the loop i is one and then the value of total is one and the third iteration of the loop i is two and at the end of that iteration the value of total is three and you see the fourth iteration i is three the value of total is six and you should be able to you know look at a piece of code like this and be able to kind of figure this out in your in your head at least for simple codes like this you know what is going on without having these print statements but again for a little bit more complex programs these print statements help us debug and you'll see that the final iteration right here the value of i is 9 right not 10 9 and then the value of total is 45. That's the final iteration, so then the final value of total is 45. Bam. All right. Now, let's, uh, let's clear that. And uh, let's reset our variables. Yep. I'm going to comment out this. That was just a simple example. And I'm going to bring back this first example. If you remember, this first example was just uh, just prints. I can count to zero. I can count to one. I can count to two, and so on. To f to four. I can count to four. Um, I want to demonstrate now the idea that a while loop is universal, and anything we can do with a for loop, it turns out we can do with a while loop, but not vice versa. It's the while loop that's universal. A for loop, you need to know ahead of time how many times you are going to loop. But if we need a loop, it can always be accomplished with while. And so I'm going to do the same I'm going to write the same program but with a while loop. So for example, I'm going to say i equals 0. So this is the uh, initializing i to 0. And then I'm going to say while i is less than 5 enter and then indent print I can count to plus string I right and then we need to increment I so I plus equals one and again this is the same thing as I equals I plus one it's just that this is this is the cooler sexier way of writing that now my claim is that what I just wrote does the same thing as uh, what I previously wrote. And just to, uh, just to demonstrate that, I am going to comment out the for loop. And I'm going to run this while loop that I just wrote. There we go. There, and there we have it. I can count to 0 and all the way to I can count to 4. So I'll, I'll presume you understand the while loop and the incrementing and so forth. And so this should not come as a surprise to you. But I, I think it's valuable to see it written as a while loop so you understand the for loop a little bit better, what for is doing and what range is doing. Okay, so those two loops do the exact same thing. You can always, always use a while loop to accomplish your looping, but that's, that, that's not true for the for. So um, why is there a for then? Well, you see from our code, uh, the for is actually simpler. Right? It doesn't require the initialization, and it doesn't require the incrementing. All of that is handled from this range function. So if you can use a for, you should probably use it because it's simpler. It helps with the readability of your code. Okay, so now the last thing I want to talk about is this range function. I want to look at this in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to just delete the while. And um, I'm going to play with the range function. Now if you type range open parentheses uh, okay yeah so I guess it doesn't it, it only gives you the stop condition that's that's weird but uh, I think what we can do is we can put the the start condition as well and then the stop condition so for example maybe I didn't want I to start at 0 if you remember that 0 was the default so maybe I want to start at 1 I can put 1 comma Five. I think that works. Uh, let's try it. Yeah, awesome. So now you see when we run the code, 
i starts at 1 instead of 0. So 0 is the default start. And uh, we just changed it. We gave it the start, and then we gave it the stop. But remember, it never hits the stop. It goes up 2, but not including the stop. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can change this. You know, we can Maybe we can start at uh, negative 1 and go to 9. So if we're going to go from negative 1 to 9, we need negative 1, 10. Right? And let's, tr let's check that out. And there we go. I can count to negative 1. I can count to 0. All the way to, and including, I can count to 9. Now, finally, you might say, well, what if I don't want to step by, uh, by ones, right? Maybe I want to count by twos. So we can do that as well. We can start, uh, let's say we can start uh, at two, and we can count to, let's say, um, 20. So if I want to go to 20, then I need to put a 21 here, because uh, remember that the, la the, uh, the stopping value is not considered. So I'm going to go from 2 to 21. I'm going to count by twos. So the incrementing thing is the, I, can, I can add that to, uh, to the range function by giving it uh, another comma and then putting 2 there. So this is saying start at 2, go up to but not including 21, and count by twos. So I'm going to save that, run it, and then here you go, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, all the way up to 20. Um, you know, I can do, I can play around with this. I can I can go to 100 and buy threes, and I can start at one. Let's say, and we'll run that. And so here we've got one, four, seven, ten, thirteen, sixteen, nineteen. If you wanted the threes, then you'd you'd actually want to start at three. We'll run that, and we see that we're going three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty, and then we keep going all the way to ninety-nine, right? I is 99 when the program finishes. All right, so I think that's all we need to really say about the uh, the for loop, right, and the range function. So uh, that's it for this video. Thank you very much.